Okay, next is from Nikki from last week. In your recent Mystical Jesus video, you mentioned that you injured your back at the gym and were saying different mantras to try and heal the pain, but it wasn't working. You mentioned you got a message that God wasn't in your pain, that you had to raise your awareness to God's consciousness to the seventh floor. Can you elaborate on what that was like for you? What did you meditate on and how did you raise your consciousness in that moment that allowed the injury to heal? We actually just talked about this story yesterday with your dad. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest realizations that has helped me, Nikki, is that there, there is no such thing as a local healing because there is no such thing as a local sickness, right? As we've said before, if I even believe that there is a physical universe, let alone a physical body, right? Then I have already created the belief in separation. Uh, it's that quote I've, I've shared many times from uh, Miguel de Molinos, the Spanish mystic from the 16th century. You will know that you are far from truth when you do not see God in everything. Really powerful quote. You will know that you are far from truth when you don't see God in everything. So if I'm not seeing God in everything, I'm far from truth. Wow. Let's take a minute to let that idea sink in. What if that's true? What if even the very basic assumption that there's a physical universe at all is what causes sickness and sin and lack? Because let's think about it this way, right? If God is infinite supply, if God is wholeness and health and is purity and perfection, then if there is an absence of those qualities in our awareness, if there's an absence of God in our awareness, it can only show up as sickness and scarcity and sin and guilt. Yeah, because that's the, the absence of what God is. So it's like a shadow being cast, right? There's an object obscuring the light in one area and the shadow that's cast is the representation of that lack of light or absence of light. Now, we know that the sun is always shining, so there isn't actually fundamentally a lack of light. But because I have this object in my awareness that there's a physical universe, there's a physical body, there's a separate person here, and disease and sickness happen to a separate person, well, then that's like a rock or an object that obscures the light and causes a shadow to be cast. So an illness is a shadow being cast into the body from the mind. It's like the mind is blocking the light of truth from shining into the body. So we have to overcome our limiting beliefs of who God is here and now to let the light of truth penetrate the physical body and allow the body to outpicture itself. So what an amazing feedback device this body is. Like, I, I know even as I'm saying this, that some of you are probably doubting that this is the way it works. Like, can it really be that simple? Surely there's more, you know, um, components at play here. And I want you to just give yourself permission for a minute to really consider if that's true. If even my thinking or, or perceiving that there's a physical universe is what causes all sickness, lack, and sin in the, in the world, right? Not just in me then I have to destroy any belief that there is a physical universe. There is not. There's not two universes, right? We never leave the physical universe and go to the spiritual universe to have our problems solved. And so I guess what I'm saying, Nikki, is that my realization that day was that I would be, I would be repeating these truths and affirmations because I had the understanding, but the understanding is not enough because reality is not in the mind, right? Reality is not in the mind. The mind's just a mirror that reflects reality. So if I'm thinking there's no sickness in God, there's no pain in God, and then I keep checking to see if my back is improving, well, I'm, I'm clearly still believing that there is a problem in a physical back, right? There's a physical problem in my physical body, and I'm checking to see if it's healed. And I caught myself checking like that enough times that I went, wow, okay, I have to be honest with myself here and say, although I know these truths mentally, there's clearly still a belief that I'm physical. I exist in matter, and there's a problem in my physical body that I'm asking God to solve. That's not true, right? 
So just like I can't make five plus five equals nine to be true, because it isn't true, it's a violation of the laws of math. In the same way, I can't make sickness real in my body and then ask God to heal my real sickness. There isn't a real sickness. There's only a lack of God awareness. So literally, my mind thinking that there's separation from God will cause the very cells of my body to think that there's separation from God, separation from source, and those cells will begin dying and distorting, and a sickness will show up, or a pain or an injury will show up. So I have to reteach my cells that there is no absence of God, that God is omnipresent. And if God is where I am, then perfect health is where I am. So that's the truth we have to meditate upon and try to plant that seed in our awareness, in our heart, until it starts to grow fruit. And so as I meditated on that, that there's no local problem here that I need a local solution for, God is everywhere all at once. If there seems to be a problem, it's just showing me, I believe I'm separate. So what I do is I say, God, forgive me for believing I'm separate from you. Please forgive my belief in separation. I can't get rid of it, right? Surely I, this limited mind, can't get rid of this belief that you're not here right now in some way. Only you can do that. So I ask for you to forgive me and to heal this belief in separation. That is a powerful prayer, my friends, because this is God's will, right? God's will is that you know the truth of oneness, that you walk in it and you demonstrate it. And so when you pray in alignment with God's will, which is to show you the truth of oneness, those prayers get answered quick. And for me, at least, epiphanies start to come in. Insights are gained where I realize in a wordless way, way, way beyond the mind, in a, in a primordial uh, somatic way, I start to realize, oh, yeah, of course there's no absence of God. I'm in some kind of delusion to think that there is. And as I realize that, I feel a joy happening within me. And so I go to that joy and I start praising God from that joy. I forget completely about whatever the senses are reporting, the back pain, the illness, the sickness, the headache, whatever it is, I don't care what the body says, right? The, the body is not the, the standard of truth. God is. So let me go to where God is. That's the seventh floor. I need to leave floor three. And let's think about it this way. If every moment we have spent focusing on our sickness or focusing on our lack is us adding thought, creative energy to the sickness, to the lack, how much time do we spend wallowing in our pain or our sickness or our lack? A lot of time, right? So I don't even need to see an immediate demonstration. Like I'm not even hung up on that. Like if the demonstration doesn't happen like that, like it did for me in my meditation, I don't care because I have taught my body to believe it's separate. So let me just be faithful to this new teaching that the body is one with the creator. And slowly that new perception will flood into my cells and begin altering them back to their perfect state of health. So maybe the, the healing will take a day or a week. This happens all the time, right? Even the story I just told with my dad, uh, we prayed for him the night before, and it was the next day, it was actually after we left for the airport, he texted us and said his blood sugar, his blood pressure was all back down to normal. His, uh, his bladder, his kidneys were functioning properly again. It was like he had a new body. And if we had an attachment that that demonstration had to happen right when we prayed, well, then now we just gave the mind permission to doubt again and to believe that there is an absence of God. So it's like Jesus said, it's not I who does the works, but the Father who dwells within me doing his own work. I don't care how long the healing takes. What I care about is correcting the belief that has caused this. My body's telling me I have a belief in separation. So let me just correct the problem where it can be solved. Of course, in miracles, yeah? All sickness is in the mind, says the Course. And so that's where we go to correct the problem. And I think that as we stop giving importance to the problem, I stopped caring about how bad my back hurt. I said, whatever, let it hurt. That's the body's issue. You are perfect. In you, there is no pain. There is no injury. That's where I'm going to go. 
And I just let myself saturate in that awareness. It's really a, a form of worship to God, worshiping and praising God for who God is. Getting into that energy level, getting into that state of consciousness <clears throat> will cause something to change at the cellular level. Maybe not immediately, but often immediately. Often we, we see an immediate shift happen. So let's leave the results up to God, but let's do what we can do, which is to be aware. Okay, there's a sickness, there's a lack, there's guilt. So where am I believing that there's an absence of God here? That's what I need to find out. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you were truly blessed by it. And I wanted to let you know that I'm really excited to now be partnering with an amazing conscious supplement company called Organifi. A lot of you know that I'm also passionate about holistic health and nutrition. And Organifi has been a staple in my daily health routine for a very long time. They make the most delicious, organic, and high quality superfood products that I've ever come across. And as you know, a healthy body is a great benefit for spiritual growth because the health of your body directly translates to the health of your mind. Everything is connected. So feeding your body with high vibrational superfoods straight from the earth is one of the best ways to create that environment for a healthy mind. But getting all the superfoods that your body needs in one day can admittedly be a little bit tough. And that is where Organifi can add a ton of value to your life. I personally start every day off with green, which is Organifi's really delicious blend of 11 superfoods like ashwagandha, chlorella, and moringa. And then in the middle of the day, I'll usually have a scoop of red, which is a delicious energy blend full of 13 adaptogens and antioxidants from berries to recharge your mind and body with a delicious blend of organic superfoods. Your body is an amazing organic machine but it needs the right fuel and signals to function at its best. And red is full of adaptogens sourced from organic herbs and medicinal mushrooms. And these are compounds that balance hormones, prime your energy pathways, and alleviate stress. So instead of crushing your adrenal system with huge doses of caffeine every day, adaptogens work with your body and give you natural, sustained energy all throughout the day. What's most important to me though about Organifi is the way that they go above and beyond to ensure the cleanest and purest ingredients in all of their products. They are USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, certified glyphosate free, and absolutely zero fillers. So I never go anywhere without Organifi and I never miss a day without taking it. And Organifi is offering a super generous discount of 20% off of your entire order when you use the coupon code ABKEY at checkout. So if you wanna upgrade your health regimen with Organifi, you can click on the link in the description box below to learn more about all the amazing products that they offer. And I promise you that your mind and your body are gonna thank you for it.